Next we have Wendy Van Baez. Wendy is a writer, teacher, performance poet, and installation artist. She is the author of Ceremonies of the Spirit and Transparencies of Light, and her prose and poetry have been published in numerous literary journals. She has performed her poetry nationally and in Mexico in cafes, bars, galleries, cabarets, and community centers. Wendy is the creator of Writing Circles for Healing, and she received a McKnight Foundation and Minnesota State Art Board grant to present writing workshops for at-risk youth and for non-profits, and is a member of the Minnesota Prison Writers Collective. Please welcome Wendy Brownbyer. So you, so you know, it's not too early for Christmas presents. It's a perfect size to fit in a stocking, I think. The poem that's in my, uh, the 2014 almanac is called In Praise of Aging. So I thought I'd skip along a few highlights of my life starting when I was young. Um, this poem takes place in Spain and it's called Recuerdos, which means souvenirs. I remember, I remember the gentle waves and how we put our feet in the water and sang. The sky piercing blue. The seals came out to play on the rocks. No one else was there. Blank sky and jagged rocks. The wind sunk to a whisper, wine warmed by sun. We passed the bottle back and forth. Your golden hair cascaded in your eyes, your eyes serious like the sea. We broke bread and dipped it into olive oil. Somewhere we had found a cracked dish. We spit olive pits into the sand, my hands warm and oily. I smeared them on the dry cracks of my chapped feet. We smelled like sun and girls. We laughed and you shook your wild cascade. We had to shield our eyes from the sharp brightness of the sun. We knew it was time to go. I don't remember anything we said. Only the sweet taste of tomato. You always carried salt in your bag. We were young. No one had died yet. The stretch marks on my belly were iridescent. My silver earrings. My cross had small turquoise stones, and one had fallen into the sea, my offering. Later, I would replace it. My hair was long and streaked with sun. We were brown. We were innocent. We thought we would always be free. So I'm sure all of you parents will be able to relate to this next poem which is called A Mother's Meditation. You didn't know how it would be, child on your knee, child tucked in your heart like a great big squeeze of pride and guilt, the amount of terror a human being can stand. The child able to stick her hand into sockets or fire, able to choke on the forgotten lost penny, scrape her knee, break his head, fall down, we all fall down when toddling our way to freedom. When your child takes off on his bike, runs off to the courthouse for the wedding you're invited to at the last minute, runs off to war, joins a commune, or hitchhikes across some lush jungle country you do not trust, not within an inch of your life, but she does it anyway, and you let her, because a parent's wisdom is about letting go, providing the net when her feet slide off the rope the welcoming pole when she slides into quicksand. You didn't know. How could you know? There's no amount of conversation to predict the way your throat knots up in pride or guilt, the way you see yourself in him magnified, certain of your mistakes, the way she rebels and tells you to go to hell, the way you love him when everything else is ruined, the way she loves you back as if nothing else matters. How many prayers can fit on the head of a pin? You dancing there with your grief in your arms, how many does it take? We imagine angels as weightless, but wide as wings arched and unfurled. How is it determined whom they are chosen to protect? 
Does it match like a heavenly personal service? Does someone ask if they prefer quiet or adventure? Do they want to swoop up someone about to step off the curb or whisper quietly in a dream? Do they pick the ones they love the most or the ones they need to forgive? And do angels have lessons to learn? Or are they free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, free at last from the seven deadly sins? Wide enough to fill all the space in our hearts, but innocent enough to fit on the head of a pin. How can you dance when grief has torn you into brooks and branches, bracken and thorns, when grief has taken you to puzzles that cannot be solved, cannot be given away? This poem's called in response to the flood in northern Minnesota um, when the that terrible, terrible storm came a few years ago and there was everybody's uh, homes got flooded and then there was a tornado went through and so far, knock on wood, I've, my home has always survived all of these storms and disasters and uh, that I have my own um, things in life that I've gone through but I'm just always really grateful that I that I have my, my books are not all soaking wet <laughs> in my files. I am blessed to step under a shower, the gush of hot water, to have indoor plumbing, sleep in a warm bed. I am blessed to be able to buy groceries, buy even flowers, buy even candles, paper towels, to have a light, a TV, to play DVDs, have a pile of books teetering on the edge of a table. I am blessed to have a PC, a politically correct bus ride, green energy and brown skin, and the hood I wasn't born in and can leave any time. I am blessed to be handed a transfer I didn't pay for, given an apology, a smile, a seat, to be asked if I'm coming over, to be wanted, to be called. I am blessed to be home alone and blessed to be in a crowd of children and blessed to be watching the world walking by with a cup of coffee or a glass of wine in my hand and a slice of pizza or a salad with cranberries and walnuts and fresh baked bread. I am blessed to be doing the dance of peace and hey baby, it's me in the mirror liking that silver that frames my face and never mind the winter of my discontent or the summer of my first heartbreak. I do not have water gushing over my floors and mass destruction and house damaged. I already declared bankruptcy and walked the sliver of despair. I already fell in the desert of defeat and arose with my mouth full of dust. I spread the ashes of my lover and thought of how to can make a soul or break a promise. And I tasted the ashes when my husband confided his HIV status was acute again. And I sank up to my neck in ash when I watched my son's mortal remains swirl away in the river. So blessed, blessed, blessed am I to work in silence and not go screaming through the streets. And what can I do to light a match to the small lantern one more time? And what can I do? but follow its luminescence that leads me on. So my poem is on page 11 in the 2014 Almanac. Um, I've had hip replacement, so sometimes I feel kind of creaky, and sometimes I feel maybe a little older than I am because of that. But there's good things about aging, too. In praise of buses rattling through the streets. In praise of passengers jostling for a seat. In praise of a transfer I didn't need to buy. In praise of snow falling from the sky. And my down coat bought second hand but warm. In praise of hips creaking in the wisdom of my years. In praise of sneezing, runny nose and tears. In praise of vision dimming and yet wide. In praise of knowing what I can't do and why. In praise of unlimited possibility, the choices made one by one. In praise of the walker I no longer need. In praise of someone rising to give me a seat. In praise of movement each time I must go. 
in praise of fast and immediate turning to slow, in praise of loving what I have and letting go of what is already done, in praise of parties where I left too soon, in praise of dancing beneath the silver moon, in praise of youthful folly when I was dumb, in praise of turmoil, at least I wasn't numb. In praise of a life full of stories, full of snow, full of sun. In praise of feelings, I have really just begun. Thank you.